barriers or guardrails are an important part of our safety hardware in the roadside environment. So if a vehicle leaves the roadway, this is hopefully going to protect them from striking something that's more serious. And it can be a slope. And we see in this in this image, there's a steep slope beyond this barrier and guardrail, which even includes a lake. Uh, it could be trees, could be rough rock edges, could be any number of obstacles. But a, a barrier or a guardrail system is going to help protect vehicles from the things that lie behind those those barriers or guardrails. And in particular, I'm going to focus on the end terminal of a guardrail system. And of course, this is the type of event we would like to avoid. This is where a an end treatment, the end terminal of the guardrail speared the vehicle. So the vehicle struck the end of this barrier and the guardrail actually went through the vehicle through actually the headrest of the driver's seat and out the back of the vehicle. Now, fortunately, even though this driver was unbelted, uh, the driver actually walked away from this crash. So ultimately, a, a much better result than what could have uh, turned out to be um, no, no serious injuries. But we do want to avoid this in the design of barrier and guardrail systems. And in particular, that end terminal is very important. So looking back at this, this image again, typically when we're thinking about a barrier, we're designing for this type of a strike. Now it'll be at an angle, it won't typically be at 90 degrees, but a, a vehicle is going to strike somewhere in a mid-span location. And what the barrier is trying to do at those locations is to contain and redirect the vehicle. Those are the two primary objectives is so that means that the vehicle doesn't go underneath the barrier or through the barrier or over the barrier and that's, that's in terms of, of containing and in terms of redirecting what we don't want to do is have the vehicle bounce off of, of the barrier and kind of return back into the roadway or have something else happen so contain and redirect is what we want to have happen at these mid, mid span locations this type of barrier is known as a W beam. If you can kind of look at the cross section of that, that has the shape of a W and that's where it gets its name. And it actually is a very strong material, even though uh, it's somewhere on the order of a 10th of an inch thick. If you've ever felt a guardrail or a barrier or stepped on it or sat on it, these are very strong pieces of metal and the shape actually gives it a lot of its strength as well as the posts and those blocks. So we can see the, the black blocks in between the posts and the barrier itself. And that pushes that barrier out a little bit so that vehicles don't snag underneath the barrier onto the post. And this entire system, the post, the block, and then the guardrail itself form as this, this system. But again, I'm gonna talk about this end terminal. And so what we're worried about here is a strike from the end and what's gonna happen when a vehicle strikes it from the end. So imagine here we're looking at the same guardrail, but we're looking from the from the edge now. A vehicle that strikes it is basically going to push this. We can kind of see it's a separate unit that's on the end. So this terminal, this terminal unit is going to slide along the rail as it is struck by the force of the vehicle. So if a vehicle strikes that end, the end terminal, it's going to push that sled along. And what's going to happen is that as that sled moves along, the W beam is going to get flattened out and pushed through this kind of sleeve here. So the, the end terminal, the forces from the vehicle is going to push that end terminal. It's going to push it along the rail. The, again, the W beam is going to flatten out, which then it's going to lose its strength and allow it just to curl up so that it doesn't spear the vehicle. That's what we, we don't want to have happen. We also have weaker posts at the end here so that, again, the, the forces from the vehicle get absorbed by this barrier system and not by the vehicle. Because if it gets absorbed by the vehicle, you're going to have some spearing or too many forces that are transferred to the occupants of the vehicle, and that's not what we want to have happen. So again, that's the force we're looking at. And ultimately, this is what we want to have happen. This is a successful strike of an end terminal. We've got that sled unit, the, the end terminal that gets pushed along the rail. And ultimately, that W beam as it gets flattened out is, is much weaker and it allows no spearing to happen to the vehicle. So if we see this, this pickup truck here in this crash test, 
no the guardrail doesn't doesn't spear the vehicle at all and that's what we want to have happen we want that in terminal and the barrier system itself to absorb that energy from that crash and not transfer it all to the vehicle and its occupants so again the the in terminal is an important focal point of a barrier system and a lot of attention has been paid to it and to me the the beauty of this design is it's, it's a pretty simple design but it's, it's very effective it's good at transferring the forces it's great at using the force of the vehicle itself to kind of power this whole system in terms of moving that in terminal along the rail flattening it out weakening it to the point that it doesn't spear the vehicle